I come to the floor today to recognize this month of May as National Foster Care Month. In 1988, President Reagan brought attention to the importance of foster care. He first designated the month of May as a time to celebrate and remember all of those people in foster care. That would include foster parents, caseworkers, and others who work to improve the lives of those in care. We made some progress since that time with legislation such as the Fostering Connections Act of 2008 and the Child and Family Services Improvement and Innovation Act of 2011. We've provided new investments and services to improve the outcomes for children in the foster care system. More recently, in 2018, Congress passed the Family First Prevention Services Act. That legislation passed 2018, changed the way federal reimbursement for foster care works, then allowing states to provide services to parents before their kids are placed into foster care, not just after they went into foster care. It also ensures more kids will be cared for by a family instead of being placed in a group setting outside of the home. Last year, I introduced and Congress passed the Family First Transition Act to help states get moving to this new system and do it more quickly. Now, a lot has changed since President Reagan first announced uh, this month of May as Foster Care Month. But one thing hasn't changed, and that is the tires, tireless work of one Iowan in particular that I want to recognize today. That is Linda Faye Heron of Johnson County, Iowa. Linda started serving as foster parent in the 1970s, so at least a decade before President Reagan recognized the importance of, of highlighting foster care. And over the course of almost 50 years, Linda has fostered over 600 kids. To emphasize, over 600 kids in need of a place to call home, even if for a few days were welcome in Linda's home. Just think how many lives just one person, meaning Linda, was able to impact by making the decision to be a foster parent. It's not just 600, although that's the number that is staggering enough. It's the birth parents of those children who, due to the help that they received from the foster care system, may have been able to treat their substance abuse and turn their lives around, and maybe to be a mother and or a father to their children again. Also, this month honors all the parents who were able to adopt children that temporarily stayed in Linda's home. Linda's uh, Linda's influence her own, her own family as well, because that family that she had continues her good work. It's this kind of example of selfless service which caused five of Linda's children then and three of her grandchildren to also become foster parents. Foster parents deserve more recognition. They deserve more support and even more services. And I will continue to work in the Senate to try to make these goals a reality. But if you have ever considered becoming a foster parent, 
This senator urges you to take that first step and reach out to your local child welfare agencies and tell them you're interested in being a foster parent. There's a great need out there for that. Sometimes the numbers can seem overwhelmingly because there are, are over 400,000 kids in foster care, some of them sleeping on the floor of their social worker's office due to the lack of available homes to care for them. But Linda is proof that just pers one person can make an incredible impact. Over the years, I've heard from many kids in foster care. I make a special effort to hear directly from them on what they think needs to improve about the system so future foster children can have a better life and a better future. You know what? After decades of being involved in this subject, I hear the same thing from them. I, they tell me, I'd like to have a home. Now, why would they say they'd like to have a home? They've been shifted maybe in one year period of time to two or three different foster homes, two or three different school districts maybe they were in. They say, I want a mom and a dad for the same reason, because they could have had three or four different moms and dads in one year. They want to be part of a family. Those are the things I hear from them. Whether that's their biological family getting the help that they need to parent their children, or foster and adoptive parents stepping up to the plate. Kids belong in a family. All children deserve a safe, loving, permanent home. Unfortunately, the foster care system has also been impacted by the virus that we're all affected by in the last four or five months. Families who were already vulnerable were thrown into unemployment and instability. Children in temporary foster care placements are remaining there much longer time than usual, and, and all because of canceled and delayed court proceedings that makes staying in that foster home longer than getting into a permanent home. Foster parents, birth parents, children in foster care lost access to peer networks and other vital support services because of the last four or five months we've been dealing with this pandemic. Especially impacted at this time, but almost all the time, are older youth who have aged out of the foster care, youth in college, as a result of the virus, lost their housing when campuses closed. Those who were training for a career or in the workforce may have lost their jobs as well. Many of the provisions in the CARES Act will help foster families and, and the youth generally that are in their care. However, I will continue to work to ensure that needy relief for kids and families is provided. I ask my colleagues in the Senate to support my resolution marking May as National Foster Care Month to bring awareness to the issues that kids in foster care face and to honor Linda of Johnson County, the one I use as an example of helping 600 kids but not only Linda, but all the other foster parents who make a world of difference. That's what this month is all about. I yield the floor.